So hi, I'm Charlotte Frasa, a third year PhD student in computational neuroscience. And today I want to give you some habits that I really felt have changed my coding and programming game. So I come from a background of physics and especially theoretical physics. So we didn't really do any programming when I was in my bachelor's. It was mainly just deriving mathematical equations. And although I do think now it's really useful, I did really have to spend speed learn how to program in different languages such as Python, MATLAB, C++ and now R to be able to do the PhD that I'm doing right now. And one of the things that I think set programmers apart from other people from other fields is really the mindset of a programmer. And I think to cultivate the mindset of a programmer I have created this list of five habits that can help you get to this mindset. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing is practice. I think the most important thing in programming is that you practice it every day. I almost see programming as a kind of sport and you don't get better at any type of sport unless you play it every day. So something that has really helped me to create this programming habit such that I do it every day is the idea of tiny habits. So tiny habits is kind of this behavioral change method that places emphasis on beginning with modest and doable goals that may be quickly incorporated Operated into a person's daily routine. The concept is that if these tiny behaviors are constantly carried out, they will eventually result in the development of larger, more significant habits over time. This strategy is founded on the idea that making tiny, gradual improvements over time can be more sustainable than trying to make massive, abrupt changes all at once. So I think the idea of creating a tiny habit and creating a programming tiny habit is really valuable. So to be able to do this, the first thing you have to do is start small. So instead of thinking about coding as this massive task that you have to achieve all at once, try to choose one tiny task that you could do every day. So for example, that's or creating a tiny programming assignment. For example, if you're following 100 days of Python code, I think every day they have a tiny assignment that you could achieve every day. Or for example, by reading a little bit on Stack Overflow or improving one part of your programming skills you can have this tiny implementable behavior that you could do every day. The second part is to choose a specific time. So when I was learning how to program, I always had my mornings free for programming. So every day, every morning, I would wake up and immediately start on some kind of tiny programming task. And it could be that I had a little bit more time that day and I would continue until the afternoon. Or it could be that I only had one hour and I would only do one hour of programming every morning. And the third thing is also to set reminders. So something that I like to do when I'm really working towards this goal is for example to use a habit tracker. So one that I really like is from Notion. They have these free habit tracker templates that you can fill in such that you can see at the end of the week if you really did every tiny habit. So these kind of little reminders if you fill this in that you have to do these tiny habits every day really work for me. The second tip is to read code. So something that I didn't really realize as a beginner is that there's so so much code written on the internet. So a lot of things that you want to do can be done in multiple ways. So you could write, for example, a for loop in Python, but you can also make this list comprehension, which is just a much shorter way to write a for loop. And I think by reading others' code pretty diligently, you can kind of see how they optimize their coding. And actually reading other people's code will also slowly improve your coding. So if you have some friends that are working on the same project, this is kind of perfect because then you can kind of see how they solved their problem. First try to solve it yourself though. Or if you don't have these kind of people in your environment, there are also websites online that you can see how other people solved their coding problems. The third thing which I wish I had done a little bit earlier during my bachelor's program and also my master's is the idea of peer programming. So peer programming is really that you work in tandem on the same assignment. And I know this is quite common in companies, but I'm not really sure if they already do this at university. But during my PhD, for example, right now I'm working together with one good friend of mine on the same project and we sometimes peer program. And I would say she's a lot 
better of a programmer than I am because she has just been programming for so much longer and if you program together with someone in tandem it is a little bit stressful but it also increases your skills by tenfold just because they can correct you immediately when you make a mistake and they can also see the way you write certain code and give you for example some suggestions so if you have the possibility to program at the university you're at I would definitely try to look into that so my fourth thing is to read the latest news I think right now in programming there's so many new technologies coming up so for example programming together with AI where AI writes part of your code is something that's really big and coming it's already been used for example copilot in github but I think in the future it will just be implemented in any type of programming language that you program in tandem with an AI and if you want to go into the field of programming, you really have to keep up with the latest news and the latest developments. Because otherwise, before you know it, the skills you've developed and curated so carefully over the years are in a language that are that is no longer used that much. And the last thing or tip that I have, number five, is to share with others what you've learned. So I think this is probably the scariest part and probably the bit that most people skip, but I think it's the most important. So sharing the code that you've created or if you make any type of project online allows you to demonstrate the skills that you have developed. And it also allows others to give you feedback and review a little bit the code that you've made. So I've noticed that whenever I put coding projects public on GitHub that I took the code that I wrote so much more seriously. So for example, when I'm coding in private for myself, just for certain small little projects, I usually write very ugly and very unreadable code. Whereas if I know that other people have to use it in the future, I usually write it in a more tutorial like style. So I put dedicated comments for future users on how to use the code and how to understand the code. But by doing this really carefully, I also noticed that I myself start to understand my own written code so much better. And also so if you dedicatedly put it on a certain website, such as GitHub, for example, you will see that in a few years, you will have a really nice portfolio of several coding projects that you've made over the years. So these were my tips or habits for becoming a better programmer. And I'm really curious if you're a programmer yourself, how you have learned it over the years, what kind of tips or habits you have developed over the years, and if you have any skills or resources you would like to share. So please put it down in the comments below and otherwise see you next week. Bye!